Far out, dude. Is that what you think of him? He doesn't see how he's coping with the lack of love that he gets. Damn, that is rough. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Spartan. And I'm Pudgy. And we are back with more Game of Thrones. We are finally starting season three. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm, yeah, it, we've come a fair way. It feels like we've come a long way. It's been a big journey. We're not even halfway yet. I oh, know. Season three, I'm pretty hyped for because, you know, most people have indicated that season one was setting up the story. Season two was budget increase. And I believe the next couple of seasons are really going to get into the nitty gritty and the core of what it means to really be in Game of Thrones. And I'm excited. I'm sure we're going to experience, you know, a lot of heartbreak and, and pain throughout this as well. Yeah. Being the show that it is. But we've also gotten to a point now where I think we're familiar enough with most characters and most of the world building and, and history where we now have more of an emotional investment behind what's happening. So... It's that point in the story now where you're like, okay, cool. I know these different factions, different areas, storylines, characters, etc., And I want to see their story arcs grow and, and, and the direction it's going to head toward. And there's just so many amazing characters that I'm rooting for and intrigued about their storyline. So yeah, Game of Thrones has done a really good job with that. I think the best way to kickstart off this season is with an update on our love, like, hate list. Okay. For your convenience... I've chosen to do it in a way where I'll tell you what I'm, ch whoever's changing, I'll tell you what they were before and who is becoming now in my lists. And a reminder for anyone new that we don't discuss this beforehand. So we're literally finding out each other's as we go alongside you guys. All right, let's go. So I'll have to kick these off. I'm going to start with the love list. Yep. Rob Stark is staying. My man's not going anywhere. I'm just, I'm intrigued. Looking forward to seeing more about him this season. Jon Snow is getting replaced on my love list. By Stannis. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Reason being is we just didn't see much of Jon Snow that yeah. last season. He can very well come back. But last season, I didn't really see anything too meaningful. He sort of got slapped around a bit. Whereas Stannis put one up the Lannisters, really gave him a good run for their money. And if not for Tywin's last minute clutch play, would have won. And I also, he's a, he's a unique leader in his own right. Very direct okay. and forthright. And I'm looking forward to seeing him. So he's gone up there. Yeah. And Tyrion stays as well because, okay. you know, he was a legend in season two. He proved himself time and time again. He did so many great plays. I agree so with that. So Tyrion's going to stay there. So my love list has pretty much stayed the same. It's Tyrion, Rob Stark, and Arya. My like list, I've replaced Jorah with the Hound. <laughs> okay. And again, I, I don't mind Jorah. He's just good. But again, a bit of a quiet season for him, in my opinion. And the Hound, he's not a character that I deem good or necessarily bad. He's a gray area, but yeah. he just showed more vulnerability, even his own dealings with his pain and his past. And, you know, he made some big decisions towards the end of last season. And I just found him intriguing. I'm like, okay, I've got a bit of respect for you. I want to know more about you. So he creeped his way on my like list. Yep. And I've replaced Arya with Varys. Yeah. Don't mind yeah. Arya, but Varys, I'm liking him. He's a bit of a unique person in this world and he offers a nice element to it and he seems genuine enough that I can like him too so yeah so I really struggled with my like list just because there's so many great characters and yeah look I just struggle okay and being decisive isn't your strong point <laughs> yeah not when not when there's like a lot to choose from like a lot just whatever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so Talissa's still on my like list Talissa I love Talissa. Such a such a minor character. In the grand scheme of things, she's done so little. Uh yeah, but I like her because no, I just like her values and what she stands for. I really do. Like she, even in the face of Rob Stark, like her king, I guess, or a king, she still stood her ground and she still held onto the values that she holds dear. You know. She didn't buckle. Like when she was helping all the prisoners and whatever, she's like, they're not my prisoners. So I like that. Um, I like Shay. I really like Shay at the moment. Like just her commitment to Tyrion. And she's also a person that is very much like Talissa in that way. Like she is protecting those around her that she feels need protecting. And then I struggled with this one. It, I was going up between Varys and... 
Daenerys. And you chose Daenerys. I chose Varys because oh, interesting. I feel yeah, like people are gonna be pissed. Yeah, because everyone's wanted you to be House Targaryen, and you just keep betraying them. Yeah, I I think this season Danny will make my like list. It's just I haven't seen too much of her other than just you know last episode with the House of the Undying. So I feel like this season she really will make her way there. Just for the fact that we haven't seen much of her. But Varys, I've just loved his interactions with most people in these last two seasons. Yeah. Like, it's just been fantastic. It's funny because we hated him at the beginning. He had a very... We thought he was going to be the real snake. Yeah. But then Pycelle took them one place and Varys actually the best of the three. And Littlefinger, so yeah. So misjudge that. And so I replaced... Joel Mormont. So the, my like list is the same besides Joel Mormont with Varys. Yeah. I think mean, there are similar characters we saw like decrease their relevancy last season. Yeah. Now, my hate list. Yep. Joffrey and Cersei are staying. I don't think they're ever going to go, to be honest. Yeah. We'll see, but I don't think they're <laughs> going to go. The third one is going to be controversial. So I've replaced Littlefinger. Okay. But I have to explain why I picked this person if you guys understand. So the third one very. has become Tywin. Okay. Which, let me explain. Oh. So I actually don't hate Tywin, right? I don't mind him as a character, but I do hate him for the fact that oh. he ruined Stannis' victory against my most hated Lannisters. So for that, I felt like he earned a place on my hate list. Now, if he does good enough stuff this season, he may get off it. For that reason, robbing my man Stannis of victory over that disgusting <laughs> Joffrey joke of a man, of a, of a child, and his snake of a mother, he has made his way on my list. Okay, interesting. My hate list, of course, is Joffrey. Pycelle, the sneaky snake. That's not going to change. Again, I was struggling between Cersei and the Red Priestress. <sighs> Maybe the Red Priestress. Like, I, I have a little bit of sympathy for Cersei sometimes. And then she always ruins it. She yeah. always ruins it. But the Red Priest Priestress hasn't done anything for me to like her at all, ever. See, I've had a bit of sympathy for Cersei too, but honestly, for me, it's no contest. Like, yeah. Cersei has that yeah. many negative things towards yeah. her name. The Red Priestress has, like... She's done a couple of things, but, all right, she killed Redling. Like, Redling was whatever. He was... And, and then, <laughs> like, he was... You know, I didn't get that attached to him. didn't get to know him that much. He wasn't too important. And, yeah, she's a bit snarky here and there, but uh, compared to Cersei, honestly, <laughs> she's just been helping. And she, she's helping my, my man Stannis, so I can give her a bit of a pass. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> Do you have an honourable mentions? Um, <laughs> if it's only dead people, because I, I was going to mention Sir Barristan, but I don't know, you start. <laughs> okay, so Sir Roderick. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm, yeah. Mates of Lewin. Oh, yeah, dude. Why did I forget all these guys? Holy I don't know. What's wrong I just, with I you? I forgot who died. Yeah, okay. They're all on mine, too. They're all on and mine, And this is, like, an, probably one that you wouldn't have thought of, but her name's Eri. I think that's how you say her name. So, one of um, the Dothraki girls, the one that always says, it is known. Oh, yeah. No, I don't care about her. But those two first two, brilliant. Now, second announcement, onto the houses we're aligning. We're going to start to all, hopefully order our T-shirts this weekend, if we remember. <laughs> I'm going Team Stark. No one's surprised by that. That's where I'm going so far. If that changes, it will change, but I'm going for the House of Stark. So not Baratheon. Baratheon would be my second option okay. if Stark's disappoint. But right now, I'm just Stark. I'll probably yeah. stay Stark. I'm no one's surprised by this. Now, unfortunately, I'll let Pudgy say what she is. Not going to be as fun as we all hoped. So uh, plenty of hate in the comments, Pudgy. Negativity. <laughs> give it all. Give it all there. Yeah. I just haven't seen much of Daenerys that... I would like just yet. That might change this season. I do really like her and I am rooting for her as well. But there are just so many Starks that I love. I love Rob and I love Arya. So at this point in time, I think I'm Stark, but I will put a pin in that. So she's doing the typical indecisive, <laughs> no loyalty move. And no. she wants to buy both t-shirts <laughs> and then she can just switch over whenever she suits. So again, hate in the comments. <laughs> I should be happy that she is picking Stark like me, but I was looking forward to the competition and having a bit of a rivalry. And I was really hope I was trying to sway her to, I was like, oh, you know, you, I think you really like Danny. Like, you got Targaryen, you really like whatever. She, in the end, she's just, you know, can't be swayed. Well, we had some competition last season when you wanted Stannis to win and I wanted Tyrion to win the war. Yeah, but this is bigger. This is who we're going to be representing. <laughs> okay. Although, actually, shit. Yeah, I do like Rob better at the moment. But Baratheon would be my... Okay, so Baratheon would be my second choice. Okay. Your second choice would be, would be Targaryen, right? So if they have a clash, there's going to be a rivalry there. Because I know I'll side with 
Stannis for sure. Yeah. And you'll side with Danny. Okay. We'll keep that little bit of rivalry going. <laughs> okay. So finally, last episode or last season. So I wanted to speak about the scene where Danny was in the house of the undying and she went through those doors and there were kind of like visions with Drogo and the Iron Throne and things like that. The way I interpret it was it was almost as if when she went through that door, it was all these memories or goals or aspirations that she wanted, they felt so real. And it was almost like, oh, we're going to keep you here, like under this spell kind almost of like thing. Almost like in a dreamland, yeah. Yeah, so, so that she could live that over and over and over again, rather than wanting to break out of that spell, I guess. So the warlock can keep her powers for good. And it's kind of like the character growth is that, she has to face the harshness of her reality yeah. and triumph that to really be able to get her goals rather than, you know, the easy way out through a sort of a, a, a delusional dreamland. Yeah. It's almost like facing her fear. She has to face her fear to get to where she wants to get to. Yeah. She can't just, you know, wish it. And it's definitely a testament to how strong she's become from that weak, innocent little girl that Viserys used to trample all over to this strong, independent woman that just takes no shit. She is taking no shit. Yes, she is learning hard lessons, but she's taking them on the chin and she's moving forward. So I love that. I'm very really much looking forward to seeing how Tywin's going to go as hands, how Tyrion's going to deal with that and where he's going to fit into all this, but particularly because Tywin's such a strong man and Joffrey's just such an inexperienced, often rash and just naive ruler. I can't imagine Tywin just, you know, sitting idly by while Joffrey makes stupid decisions. So I'm looking forward to Tywin really reining him in, you know, pulling rank and just saying, sit down, boy, like, I'm going to tell what happens here. You know, Tyrion already yeah. did that, but Tywin's a whole ne another level in terms of his battle experience and qualification. So I'm definitely looking forward to that and I'm hoping that that happens. But in the same breath, I'm very sad for what position Tyrion is in right now. Like, it seems like a very vulnerable position, but also one where, yeah, it's just sad. He's lost the one thing that he love that he was good at so i think i was always expecting it because it was temporary yeah. position so it didn't shock I didn't, me honestly i didn't think it happened so soon yeah maybe not but i, I knew it was gonna happen at some yeah. point so i'm more interested to see what his rebound is like yeah now the other thing that you guys mentioned in the comments was that when loris tyrell came in at the end scene of episode nine after the war he was wearing renly's armor which I thought was a really nice tribute to Renly oh, and okay, his yeah. death. I didn't pick up on that. Even more so that it was against Stannis, the person who killed Renly. And he, you know, he didn't go off and get his vengeance the way he wanted to. He did it in a really strategic way with Tywin. And I'm happy that, you know, he got his justice. I'm not. Oh, yeah, because you're a Stannis lover. The White Walkers at the end? with what I believe was an army of whites, I think. That was pretty full on. That adds a whole other element to the show. Anyway, it almost looked like, like some sort of zombie apocalypse. But the leader especially looked like there was something else, a whole other layer to yeah. learn. And it just made it seem like the show was just, you know, you got what's happening in King's Landing. That almost seemed so small scale compared to what's really happening on the other side of the wall. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to just learning a lot about the wildlings, seeing how Jon Snow is going to hopefully grow this season yeah. and really you know, delve into his character lore, maybe find out about his mother as well, which sort of eluded us last season, but now I'm sticking about it. I want to know again. Oh, do ya? <laughs> and I'm assuming that Sammy's still alive, but it was very weird in the last yeah, episode. Yeah, you said that when, he was dead. Well, I just thought, how can you survive that? Unless for some weird reason, this army turns a blind eye to him. I think they did. Yeah, they must have seen him as so irrelevant that they just ignored him, but it was really weird. I don't want Sammy to be on my honorable, honorable mentions list. Because it doesn't seem like there's any compassion or reasoning by them other than, you know, but again, I don't know what their goals are. So I'm interested to see how that's going to pan out and more, you know, of the fantasy side across the other side of the wall will be interesting to explore for sure. Yeah. I'm worried for Sansa after Joffrey decided to marry Marjorie at the end and Cersei sort of manipulated that as well. I believe it was Littlefinger who mentioned to her that she's in more danger than ever now because she's not protected by the title of being queen. Yeah. She can still be used as... Joffrey's play thing, but be used and abused. And I feel I bad for her. Not. I hope she's not. Yeah, I feel for her and I'm worried. And honestly, I just can't wait till both Arya and Sansa get into Rob's arms again. Like, yeah. just to know that they're behind his army again will give this feeling of safety. Because we've got Jamie heading towards his landing with Brienne, which is, you know, that's going to be interesting how that's going to shift things up. 
the way you in uh, yeah so you interpreted Cersei l vouching for Sansa to like be tossed to the side was manipulative I kind of interpreted that as because they've had these conversations where you know good luck with my son and things like that so I feel like that was saving her in a way I don't know nah because I think Cersei's main focus despite knowing Joffrey's a maniac is him having the most power and control of all and so she Sansa started to become a liability after you know and it was just it was more of an obligation mm -hmm. so yes she related to her but I didn't get the sense that she was really cared for Sansa. It was just that, well, you're going to be in this position. Let me tell you how the reality of it. Maybe. And then when a better choice came, Sansa got thrown to the side. That's the impression I got. Yeah. I read that a bit different. Yeah. So you read it the wrong way. It's okay. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> oh, I hope those words don't bite you in the ass. As always, guys, we want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's supporting us over on Patreon. It helps out the channel a lot and we do really appreciate it. If you are interested in supporting us over on Patreon, check out the link in our description. We do offer ad-free early access to upcoming reactions as well as uncut reactions. So if any of that interests you, check that out. For those of you over on YouTube, if you enjoyed today's reaction, remember to leave a like. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you know as soon as the next episode drops. Okay, without further ado, let's start season three. Let's begin. And we will be watching the intro as well because it's been a handful of episodes since we did. See if there's anything new here. No intro this time. What the hell? Sounds like the aftermath of the war or something. Oh, Sammy. Shit, okay. This but season opens up different. Damn, how scary would that be? That's some storm, holy crap. My well, mate's still alive. Brother. What? I'm guessing that's not who he thinks it is. It's a cloak. Someone's dead or it's going to be our buddy White. Oh, shit. Wow. Damn. Holy shit. Oh, no, dude. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There's no way Sammy survives all these to die like this. What the hell? Oh, ghost! No way, dude. What a beast. How did he just get on fire? How did it get on fire? Oh. oh. Nice. <gasps> Legend. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god. Oh, dude. I respect it. Did you send the ravens? That was your job. Your only job. Yeah, to let reinforcements. Well, to let everyone know. Damn. But we have to make it. Have to warn them. Or before oh. winter's done, everyone you've ever known will be dead. Oh Shit. my god. The Night Watch just got high stakes now. He just got real. I like that intro, having a, a teaser before the actual intro. That's awesome. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. That's mad. That was so much, man. Oh my god. Just right in there, the stakes build higher, the significance of everything beyond the wall. Intense. Like that was a great way to start the season. Great way. The Dragonstone. Harrenholm. Which is now Little Fingers, right? Yeah. Good old Winterfell. Oh, it's on fire. Like, Damn, they even updated it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I wonder what happens to Theon this season. Yeah. The damn wall. They've really paced it well, building that up slowly, slowly, you know. I know, literally first scene of the entire series, and only now we're getting, like, the full... I already got the feeling that season three is just going to hit different. Just with that intro, I'm like, oh, this is even on a new level. Asta Pop? Asta Pope? Door, I thought it was. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. The their font like makes it hard to read sometimes. Okay, so there's gonna be a new place or two. So intense. Alright, let's, let's go. go. 
They're all just working together cohesively. That's what it seems anyways. Oh, it's a giant. We finally meet one. I didn't know if we'd ever meet one. Oh, wow. Damn. I'm angry. I've seen them pound a man straight into the ground like a hammer on a nail. Wow. She almost likes spooking him. Oh, shit. They just seem like normal humans when you see it at a glance. Well, of course they are. Yeah, yeah. When I'm free, will I be free to go? Oh my god. I'll be free to kill you. Yeah, you don't want that. What happened to their fathers? <laughs> Some of them were killed by crows like you. Hmm. Brings the reality to the other side of the war. What do we want with the baby crow? This baby killed Coronathan. Intriguing. Is it Igor, his daughter? I don't know. Hair. That half hand that killed the friends of mine. Friends are twice your size. My father Damn. told me big men fall just as quick as little ones. Oh, oh nice. yes, John. I like it. Plenty of little men. Try to put the souls through my heart, and there's plenty of little skeletons buried in the woods. Oh, great scene, dude. So, you're Ned Stark's bastard. I love how Ned's name knows. Is that Man's Raider? Which one's Man's Raider? No, no. Oh. Oh, you're right. He looks more like a Man's Raider. Interesting. This chicken eater you thought was king is Tormund Giant's Bane. He wants me to lead one day. But here you are. A traitor. If I'm a traitor, then you are too. I was waiting for that line. Well said. And he respects it. I'll ask you one last time. Why do you want to join us? Say the right thing, John. I saw Craster take his own baby boy and leave it in the woods. I saw what took it. Yeah, he did. I want to fight for the side that fights for the living. I can't tell if it's a bluff anymore. It is, it is. He kind of, yeah, but he said it well. Yeah, And I sure. think he believes part of it. Yeah. Tyrion, you're still you. We love you. It's your sister. The queen? <laughs> the queen. Shush. This will be interesting. They stay outside. I'm not afraid of you, little brother. Should be. <laughs> He's so paranoid, I feel for him. Said you'd lost your nose, but it's not as gruesome as all that. The man who cut me lost more than his nose. Yes, he did. The rebels came for Joffrey's head. They lost their own, thanks to father. She's trying to make sure all loose ends are covered. Of course, it wasn't a rebel who tried to kill me. No? Curious. Mm. Of course you are. Then I don't suppose you need much room. Grand Maester Pycelle made the same joke. You must be proud to be as funny as a man whose balls brushes hair. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tyrion, man. He's been through so much and you can see he looks broken. Why are you so nervous about what I'm going to say to father? True. I expect you'll tell lies about me, about Joffrey. She's paranoid. But you're not half as clever as you think you are. Mm. Oh, I yes, he disagree. is. <laughs> yep. So, so you're crossing the wrong person, all right? You put your hand on that door. You lose the hand. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> I like him. You grow bored protecting me? I grow poor protecting you. <laughs> <laughs> You've given me a taste for the finer things. And if you want me to carry on protecting you, you'll need to pay more. He did say he would always pay him more. How much? Double. Double? Damn. He's really haggling him. Damn, Bron. I hope he never betrays him. Oh, we were thinking that was still alive. And you can see his fingers, uh, fingertips Damn, are Damn, finally off. we've seen it. Damn, imagine that. Oh, they heard! 
Oh. Damn, poor guy is really struggling. And serving which king? This is do or oh. die here. The one true king of Westeros. So loyal, man. Stannis Baratheon. I like that, yeah. Thank God. Could you imagine if he said otherwise? He will recruit. He's a broken man. His fleet lies at the bottom of Blackwater Bay. They say he sees no one. Not his generals, not even his wife. Only the Red Woman. I was wondering how he's coping with it all. And burning men alive. What? They built a great fire when Stannis returned. No way. What? Spoke against her, she called Sevens of Darkness. Oh, I was right not to like her. Don't tell me Stannis loses it. I was right. I'm happy I've got her in my hate list. You cannot turn Stannis against her. Maybe not, but I could carve her heart out. Please oh. do. When you're dead, I'll gather your bones in a little <laughs> and let your widow wear them round her neck. <laughs> I mean, he tried to stop him. I hope it doesn't end up that way. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look how many people he's got with him. Damn. Yes, Rob. I've got a feeling there'll be another big battle, maybe a couple this season. Damn. Shit. Bodies everywhere. This is Heron Hall, right? I think so. Yeah, wow. That would be very confronting. Far out, dude. It's like a genocide, it looks like. Callan, this is the reality. They're going to see someone they know. Who's that? My father's banner man. It's got no words. I'm just like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> They're all waiting for him. It's like, well, what next? Oh, he looks Find determined. Find a chamber that will serve as a cell. He has to keep that up. Yeah. Yeah, he's really, really hurt by that. She's your mother. She freed Jamie Lannister. The Lannisters robbed them of their sons. She robbed them of their justice. <laughs> what? This seems like overwhelming. Damn, dude. Holy crap. So intense and eerie. Damn. Oh, I want to see this interaction bad. He's just making Tyrion wait. The badge looks good on you. Almost as good as it looked on me. <laughs> Not nearly as much. Am I enjoying it? I was very happy as Hand of the King. Yes. I heard how happy you were. Did you better get some respect after what he did? I sent you here to advise the King. And he did! You chose to spend your days, as you always have, bedding harlots. No, he didn't. I organized the defense of this city while you held court in the ruins of Harrenhal. Yeah, tell him how it is, man. The enemies were at the gate. While your grandson, the king, quivered in fear behind the Yes, he lead. did. I bled in the mud for our family. Yep. And as my reward, trundled off to some dark little cell. Yeah, Tom should understand that. Tell him. I have seven kingdoms to look after. Three of them are in open rebellion. Tell me what you want. I get his perspective, but I do too. I'm all for Tyrion right I'm now. I'm Tyrion. Jamie is your eldest son, heir to your lands and titles. He is a king's guard, forbidden from marriage or inheritance. How's this gonna go? Go for it, Bala, go for it. Please. We'll find you accommodations more suited to your name. Tywin, are you serious right now? If you serve faithfully, you will be rewarded with a suitable wife. He has one, thanks. Myself be consumed by maggots before mocking the family name and making you heir to Casterly Rock. Holy oh. shit, dude. You who killed your mother to come into the world. Wow, dude. Made spiteful little creature. Full of envy, lust, and low cunning. Oh, dude, that's brutal. The right to bear my name and display my colour, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. You are. Wow. The gods have condemned me to what you waddle about, wearing that proud lion that was my father's sigil and his father's before him. Far out, dude. Is that what you think of him? He doesn't see how he's coping with the lack of love that he gets. Damn, that is rough. 
The next whore I cut in your bed, I'll hang. Oh, stay, please stay oh, hidden. No. Please stay hidden. Holy shit, dude. What a damn scene. I'm so happy that you put Tywin in your hate list. I'm like, it's like we knew. Like, I put the red pre stress, you put Tywin. I don't know. Like, we have some psychic powers or something, but just in time. It's a tough one because I get his perspective and I get that the way that Tyrion has dealt with his neglect has been to often present himself as a, a fool. Yeah. But obviously we see the deeper layers to that. And especially after everything he contributed, I also get the toughness of Tywin got to his position because he's never waited for someone to pat him on the back. Yes. Through thick and that thin. That part I agree with. But I still don't at all like the way Tyrion's been treated. And I feel really bad for everything he put his life on the line. Yeah. And then he's been treated like shit by everyone. So I, I definitely still hate it. I particularly don't like how Tywin thinks that his wife went off with someone and then had Tyrion and thinks that he's a bastard child just because he didn't come out the way that the other two did. I don't think that he thinks so much that perspective. He said that. He literally said that. Yeah, not words. that his wife went off and had someone else. I think it's just basically saying he wishes he could disprove because it's such an embarrassment to the genetic line that he wants to be proud and strong that he just wishes he could disprove him as his child. Basically saying, I wish I never owned you kind of thing. Yeah. Or, or that you were, I don't think he necessarily thinks his wife went and cheated okay. on him. That was disgusting. Like, I feel so bad for Tyrion. You see the, even the way he opened the door with Cersei, there was so much pain and paranoia and yeah, the poor guy. And then on top of all that, I get it. Like, Bronn's not so bad, but when he, Tyrion's already dealing with all of this, then he's like just asking for double and just being a little bit of a shithead with that. But yeah, well, I, I don't think, even though it's on my hate list, I don't actually hate Tywin that much, especially not compared to Cersei and Joffrey. Yeah. I understand his position. He's definitely a very tough father and I don't, yeah, say what I need to say, but I can also sympathize with it, that yeah. archetype and the leadership role that he's playing does come at a cost and at big decisions. Yeah, for sure. Might I speak with Lady Sansa alone? No, no, no. I saw your mother not long ago. I hate when he starts like that. Well, the property of the crowns dealing you would be treason if you were to tell just one I person. won't tell anyone. Damn, he's even gonna play her. Yeah. When I set sail, I might be able to take you with me. I don't trust it. Yeah. Please tell Shay. Watch out for her. I always do. She seems genuine in that. Watch out for her with him. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I think that's important foreshadowing there. There's always a twist to that man. Oh, they're going to be bigger? They look a decent size. On. It's a close up, so it still looks like it's tiny, but they can fly at least. That's bigger than before. Okay, progress. And they've got a ship. Oh, that's so cool. Nice. <laughs> oh. Damn, it's cool. You can tell she loves them like a mother. Like they are her babies. Oh, when they're fully grown, dude. Yeah, they're not big enough for her to ride. Another lovely day in the high seas. Don't mock them. Oh, yeah. Oh, true. The Dothraki followed strength above all, Khaleesi. You'll have a true Khaleesar when you prove yourself strong. Hmm. He's good to remind her of the importance. He's been a wise counsel. I still want to know why he betrayed her. We don't really know the full reason, do we? I think it was to get home, I think. Not betray her. Betray his... In, in, in King's Landing, originally. Yeah, we do. The Stannis. Your grace. That was the one man that can revive him. He looks so different. Very beaten. Yeah. I had hoped to speak to you alone, Your Grace. You are alone. No, you're not. Look at the guy in the eyes, man. You're an honourable man, a just man. And there is still a war to fight. I am fighting. Not in the right way. It's weird seeing Stannis like this. How would you punish the infidels, Sir Devils? I do not judge people for the gods they worship. If I did, I'd have thrown you in the sea before you ever set foot on Dragonstone. Say Damn his brother. Right. I like how he speaks straight facts. I could have saved those men. Maybe she could have. But I wasn't there. 
Because you convinced your king to leave me behind. Oh, would that have saved his son? I don't know, I just don't trust her. Do you hear them screaming? All those burning men in the water? Stop torturing him. He lived it enough. Death by fire is the purest death. Yeah. So she knew it. That was the line. The woman is evil. She's a mother of demons. Take him to the dungeon, lock him in a cell. Holy oh, shit. God. There's no way Stannis is that blinded dude. He is, for sure. Not to the man who saved him. That's ridiculous. That pisses me off. So, yeah, she predicted the death of his son, and then she set him alight then by provoking him. Oh. Can a boulder just fall on that bloody... Please. What the hell is she doing? Would you like to speak with her, Your Grace? She's too scared to get out. Bad men wanted to come into this city and do terrible things, but your father stopped them. Seems like she has a bit of a heart of gold, you know? Maybe. I need more convincing in this show. Under King Joffrey's leadership, your fathers saved the city. They saved us all. From now on, we're going to take care of you. Okay, I mean, that's some brownie points for her. But I feel like Joffrey's going to get in her way at some point. Oh, yeah. But she can take Joffrey for sure. You reckon? Yeah. Come to me for whatever you need to feed them, clothe them, or house them. Directly to me. Put that royal queen to use. All right, I like her. I'm and she worried. knows directly to her. But I'm worried about her in the presence of all these Lannisters. Nah, she can hold her own, I think. Sit, sit. I do apologize, my lady. Small council meetings. He's apologizing. Not long ago, we were attacked by a mob there. Yeah, because of Wonder your son. Why. Facts become less and less important to her as she grows older. <laughs> you were your father's son. Little oh, do you know. Oh, she's throwing little jabs there. <laughs> what an awkward dinner. As Sir Laura said, Lady Marjorie has done this sort of uh, charitable work before. I'm sure she knows what she's doing. He's so different to her compared yeah. to Sansa. So far, I'm still worried for her, but no. she's older too and more experienced. I think he's sort of like almost taken aback by her. The little fool. They begin their training at five. Every day they drill from dawn to dusk. So they're lying. This guy's lying. Far out. Oh my god. I feel like I'm not gonna like this demonstration. This guy looks like a prick. There is no need. Oh my god! Oh. oh, that would sting! Holy crap, dude. Oh. What the hell? An unsullied must go to the slave marts with a silver mark, find a newborn, and kill it before its mother's eyes. Surely, no. We make certain there is no weakness left in them. Holy crap, this is ruthless. She doesn't like that. Please kill him, I hate him. Wow. Jeez, man. I hope she burns him. Oh, oh that no. cloak doesn't look good. I reckon the girl's a trick. I'm nervous. What the oh, hell is that? Nice. Jorah, oh. I believe. Oh, he was trying to protect. Wow. What the hell is that? Damn. Just showing these people are different. Shit. Is that so embarrassing? Mm, no. It looks like him. I owe you my life, sir. The honor is mine. My queen. <laughs> it is. Good call. What the hell? 
I know him. That's one of the greatest fighters the Seven Kingdoms has ever seen. Damn, good to see him back. King Robert is dead. I've been searching for you, Daenerys Stormborn, to ask your forgiveness. I was sworn to protect your family. Oh, wow. Damn, him and Jorah together will be cool. No way, I didn't foresee this. Allow me to join your Queen's Guard, and I will not fail you again. He did fight to defend them, to be fair. Sparrow and sell me, yeah. I'd love to see him fight again, dude. Oh, Man's this back. is so good. Good pickup, dude. How the hell did you pick that up? Memory of Martin Kenzie. Your girl knows a thing or two. That was a really good episode. Yeah. Like, honestly, probably one of the best. I mean, every season's been fantastic, but I could actually feel the quality, the storytelling upgrade, the budget increase. Like that just from the from start to finish, there was so much in that. That's one of the strongest season starters I think that we've seen. Yeah, it was really nice. And all the new like scenery was quite beautiful as well. And it really managed to touch on so many of the points left from last season all in one episode. Normally, we have to wait two or three to really see where everyone's at. Yeah. This covered everything. Yeah, pretty much. Damn. Holy crap. I don't know where to begin with this discussion. <laughs> Should we go backwards? <laughs> Sir Bellamy's back. Sir Barristan sell me. Do not. <laughs> do not edit that in. <laughs> do not edit that in. Sir Barristan sell me is back. You saw that I didn't think it was him. I remember yeah. he was clean shaven. And, and after I said no, I was like, could he have grown a beard? But I didn't see the face well enough. Of course he could have grown a beard. It's an interesting turn of events. That was hard to watch that scene at the end though. Oh, just cuts off the neck. Like, that man, I hope he gets destroyed. Oh, the nipple scene? Yeah. yeah. And uh, like he was just lying and I didn't like it. Oh. I hope that, I was hoping that Jorah could understand maybe, but who knows. There's a lot of that in um, Spartacus, by the way. If you ever watch that one day, you'll see that it was hard to watch those scenes, dude. However, I didn't see him going back to the Targaryens. I thought maybe he would go to King Rob or maybe Stannis as a last resort as lo from loyalty to King Robert. Oh, I really? Didn't... Well, I thought one of them or I thought maybe we'd want to see him again because we've seen a lot of off-screen happen... off things happen as well. But to go to Daenerys, like I did not expect that. So that was... I love that move, by the way. And yeah, that's right. Like he's been the king's guard f since the Mad King, or maybe a little bit longer. So it makes sense. He's loyal to his duty. So I get that. I... It's a questionable move because he seems like a very honorable man. And considering he served a shit king, I mean, yeah. he's lucky that his daughter is a lot better. But he was loyal to the king while... Oh, was he the King's Guard? Yeah. Because wasn't Jamie? Oh. Or was there more than one King's Guard? I don't know. Yeah, there's maybe there's multiple. Because I was gonna say, because he would have watched then as Ned's older brother, you know, and not done anything, and that's an injustice. So yeah. you know. But anyway, nonetheless he's loyal to his role. Yeah, and I feel like Danny has a good reputation of being fair. 100%. Um, and now Jorah's got someone to have as a teammate too, which is good. Yeah, true, true. But see, D Danny, she still has that trusting side of hers. She needs She's learning, to, for sure. Yeah. Well, lucky Sabaris and Selmy was there. That was got screwed over hardcore. I don't know. Stannis seems to be in a, in a just what he got He's to my lovely. He seems to be in a weird state. And I don't like a man like Stannis being played like the way he is. You know, he should be making his own decisions and. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't yeah. like what we're down right now. Because Davos has been there for him in the hardest of times. Any reason he's here today? You can't turn your back know. on a man like that. He would have died without um, so da uh, yeah, without Sir Davos. So Davos has loyally followed him. He's been there for him. He's told him all the hard truths. And now you're just gonna trust this red woman priestess? Like, I think there'll be some at least spite, which I can understand because Davos convinced him not to bring the priestess and. Yeah. In the end, he's thinking that she might have been able to save them and turn the tide of the war. So, I it's a it's a it's a hard situation, right? But he's, he's he's obviously carrying a big load from his army, getting screwed over big time. And but he looks very worn down and worn looks out. Looks like he's aged. Yeah, and he looks like even skinnier, almost like underfed. Like he he doesn't look healthy. Yeah, I think that's the point. But yeah. We got Jon Snow yeah. across the wall. That was a heavy, what an intro, great intro. And it was really cool just to see everything going on. The possibilities it opens up, the storytelling it opens up. But yeah, wow. And I mean, we expected Jon to get to know the wildlings more and now he's going to have to play that on for a while. I wonder where this takes him. 
Yeah, I mean, Man's Raider is, he's intriguing and he doesn't, he doesn't take no bullshit. I mean, look, there's a truth to a little bit of what John was saying, like, in terms of seeing a White Walker and that whole experience. So he spoke from a little bit of truth that he wants freedom for that reason, but he still smells the bullshit, Man's Raider. So... And the guy, the guy we saw as Man's Raider is more what I expected him to be like. Yeah. We saw the first one. He almost seemed like not cunning enough. It was like cunningness that was needed to yeah. tame the wildlings, not necessarily just brute strength. So. Yeah. And that guy looks like, I don't know, I'm just generalizing because of the color of the hair, but like Egret's father or something. Maybe. We know, oh, am we, I boring we know you? Yes. <laughs> very much. <laughs> But yeah, Sammy at the start. Oh my god, uh, that would that I was on the edge of my seat the entire time because I was like, oh my god, like he survived this. They just went past him, and now there's one plodding along, and they're about to kill Sammy. Like Honestly, because we've lost so many much greater <laughs> men, in my opinion. I care about Sammy, but I wasn't like I'm almost to the point where I'm like, dude, my soul's been butchered and torn apart. Like Aww. at this point, what can it's good days alive, but so much has happened. I I becoming somewhat numb. I know people laugh last time I said that. Obviously, it's still going to have shock value and I'm still not ready for what's to come. I don't think I can be. Yeah. But you get a little bit numb versus when I first came into this series, any death was sort of like, what the hell? Like, someone who doesn't usually like good characters dying. Now I'm sort of almost expecting every second character to die. Well, I love that Joel Mormont actually came in that moment. I've, I feel like I was so excited to see him again. And just his presence, like, was really cool as well. Like, it was nice and strong. In regards to Danny, her dragons are actually growing quite a bit. They're not big enough for her to ride yet, but they're at a decent size and it's quite promising. So I reckon season four will be when they show potential. They'll be at least like medium size, I reckon, because they're growing at a probably a faster rate. Maybe she's got some sort of special gift. That'll change the game of war and everything. Yeah, I know. And I wonder what we're like. Because she's in a Westeros, so we've got to remember, this all heads back to her eventually coming towards Westeros. So while they're fighting each other with yeah. swords and shields, there are dragons coming. It's just And, and White Walkers. <laughs> yeah, that too. And it's all pacing so much. It's still happening in the background. Like It's going to be unrecognizable in a few seasons. So much, It's going to be so different what's actually going on, what's actually at stake versus how it all started. Yeah, well. I'm finding Marjorie quite intriguing, actually, this episode, especially the way that Joffrey responds to her and yeah, she knows how to play the game and still get what she wants. So she's much more For experienced now. than Sansa. For sure. For now, but I just don't trust Joffrey. He's so schizo that yeah. he can just turn like that. So, and I don't know how long she can outplay Cersei. So I'm yeah. concerned about her and it's really weird. I wonder where Sansa stands at this point. Like it's sort of few yeah. questions there to be answered. And I really, I just don't like Santa and Littlefinger teaming up. It's risky for sure. My man Tyrion, the poor guy, like, I know we covered it, but I just can't get over how much pain he is in right now. Like, I just want him to be happy and I have since the start and it's just sad to see him like that. He, you finally get something that you love, that you're good at, that you feel worthy of. And you're just getting spat on by your own father. Like, oh, it's an embarrassment to give you the title to Castly Rock. Like, ridiculous. He is smarter than Jamie right now. I mean, he, Tywin even said it. Jamie had learning disabilities. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I don't think I feel, I don't think I feel too disheartened by it all in the end mm. because I think I'm just looking forward to, I, I see so much more potential in Tyrion's character arc. and. Yeah. I was anticipating a lot of this, just the direction that was happening. So I hate seeing it though. It's saying it's still a bit rough, but in the contrast of other things going on, it's less rough for me. Yeah. But also I just knew like, I'm looking forward to Tyrion's rise. You know, I, I hope that he builds back. I think there's a lot more potential in his character. And so I'm looking forward to that. Guys, we hope you enjoyed our reaction to episode one of season three. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button because the next season and beyond is going to be wild and we're here for it. If you enjoyed today's reaction, remember to leave a like and we'll see you guys on the next reaction. Until then, take care of yourselves. See you guys.